decided to marry, and Joy presented her idea to her parents, who initially worried about how they would communicate, but yeah. eventually gave their green light to the marriage. Hey guys. Hello, hello. Tina Do here. And Monique is here. Well, man, I saw this video and uh, I want to see, I want to watch it with you guys. I haven't watched it. My wife have not watched it, but the title caught my attention. They all laugh when she left America to marry an African village man. Love, don't judge. Oh, you I like to... the title and I like yeah. the picture they were here. You ready to jump into I'm it? I'm ready. Let's hit it. After we talked about ministry, made sure everything matches up and everything did match up because God told us that we were meant to marry each other. Then we just talked to my parents and he talked to his mom and we scheduled the wedding. I give myself to you as my only love in life to love you, honor you. What is love? Well, everyone can have their desired definition of love. But when you ask Kelly Joy Wanyoni, an American woman living in rural Kenya, she will tell you that love means sacrifice. I quit my job and I took all of my volunteer activities with church and gave them to someone else. I sold my car. I ended my contract with my apartment. I sold my piano. I used the money from the car and the piano to buy a one-way ticket to Kenya. <laughs> she loved a man in Kenya whom she could never talk to. She married a man here who had a strange proposal. But throughout this story, you will learn how love can make you do strange things and why strange things in love can turn out to be blessings. Man, I, I, I love the whole thing right away. Oh, like, no. just, wow. I know. I, I'm trying to hold back tears. That's sweet. That's really oh, sweet. Yeah. And you can tell that uh, she, she's, you know, the family is, in, is, is a Christian. Mm hmm Yes. And the, this is one thing I love. She said the Lord told her. Yes. Wow. Wow. Mm. Look at these beautiful kids. I know. They're so beautiful. They're a beautiful couple. Wow. <laughs> Every year, more than 4 million Africans try to immigrate to the United States but only 200,000 managed to achieve that. But what if I tell you that there are Americans who literally leave their paradise country to come to Africa? I mean, what can possibly make you leave a country everyone wishes to live in, to simply go and live in a certain African country? Sure enough, it's not money, nor is it some sort of good life. But then it can be love. In my heart, I was hurting because I was falling in love with Albert because God told me he was my husband, so I allowed myself to have feelings for him. You heard it right. Love can take you from the United States and bring you all the way down to Africa, down its most rural areas to be. The way God brought my wife <laughs> to Africa. For the, like, my wife came to, come to Nigeria for the first time that she traveled outside this country, America. How did you feel that day? Ooh, I was I was um kind of nervous, scared, and happy and excited at the same time. Wow. You know, going to a different country without you know family. Yeah. To meet you, it was uh like man, I was I think I was just so excited to see you. So, um, but it was a little nervousness without me going to a country by mm. myself was yeah scary. Yeah. You know? Wow. Be precise. And if you think we are exaggerating, let me introduce you to Kelly Joy Wanyoni. My name is Kerry Joy Wanyoni. The American-born Joy was raised in a Christian family, and it took her just eight years to know her role in life. She had a vision which showed her that she would serve as a missionary in Kenya and that she would be a farmer. A few decades later, here she is in Kenya, and here we are talking to her. Uh, my dream as a kid was to be a missionary and a farmer, but I didn't know I could do both. Um, and here I am in Bungoma, Kenya, doing both of them now. Now, she lives in a very remote town of Bumala in the far east of Kenya. We traveled more than 480 kilometers across roads, railroads, and rivers to come here and learn everything about her passion, 
but mostly her incredible love story. I was asking myself, would I do this for my husband? Okay, so my thing is like it was easy for her because she don't I don't think she have any children. Yeah. You know? Because I would definitely do this for my husband if I didn't have any children before meeting him. Yeah. You know? But absolutely, I mean, it's how much I love you. I would have I would have. Oh, but, but. but yeah, I've been like, you know, as a, with kids, I'm like, nah. Yeah, yeah cause can't do it. Yeah. I would I, I would not advise you to do yeah. that too. They'd be too busy looking at us like we crazy. Like, mm-hmm. what? We gotta learn how to farm. We gotta learn how to <laughs> <laughs> When we went to visit them, we were warmly welcomed by Albert Wanyoni, the husband of Kelly Joy Wanyoni, and a motorist. The two beautiful souls live in this very remote village with their kids, including the first-born boy, Zachariah, and their last-born daughter. As we arrived that morning, Joy was just waking up and preparing breakfast. Everybody was served, including these children, who always spend their mornings here to get some good tea mixed with milk, a typical breakfast for most Kenyans. <laughs> My wife is scary. Will you join me? Please run this to us all. Joka. A kazi yangu ya kwanza ilikuwa kazi ya ya kuweka mawe kwa rori. Mhm. Ya. Wait, you don't speak English? kazi ya pili ilikuwa poda poda. Pikipiki. Ya. It all started with a calling to leave everything behind and head to Kenya. That October 2017, Joy shattered her life for good. She I thought this like this current this is 2017. Wow. Was a young educated lady who had a job, a car, and an apartment in the United States, ready to live her dream life like any other dedicated young person. But her life had a different destination, and she would not live in the United States, but in Kenya. She already knew this, but had chosen to take her time and prepare, until she was ordered by God to simply leave everything behind and come to this magnificent country. She hesitated, but eventually gave in. Then she sold everything she had to take a one-way ticket to come to Kenya. I'd been... So, mm-hmm. one-way ticket. Wow. Because if, you know, if she would have bought a uh, uh, round ticket... What is this? <laughs> but this is like a, a super uh, like decision that she have to take. Like, I'm going to buy a one-way ticket... At least I, I think uh, uh, I'm not gonna have any, any money left. I'm just gone. Wow, it takes a lot, man. Yes, it, it really do take a lot. Cause I'm over here saying that she got wow. She's like, see, for us Americans, we consider this camping. So she's basically camping every day. Yeah. She's setting up fires. She's cooking on a fire pot outside. Like from from gas cooking, from yes. electric cooking, from AC, from all days. Oh my goodness! Just give it up for love. You wouldn't even, but, but let's be honest. You you don't even live like this though. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. My husband is not a village guy. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people that live like this mm-hmm. in hometown, yeah. in a village. Because uh, we live in city. Yeah. yeah, so he a city boy, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh, my thing is lot. like, um, I wonder, can he speak English? Yeah. Yeah, because oh, uh, uh, she, yeah, she's a she's American. Yeah, because I'm like, she really really know his language. Like maybe that. they ask him which one will you prefer. Yeah, or maybe he don't like how he speak English. You that's know? true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And having several visions and words from God about coming to Africa, coming to Kenya, and uh, he moved and spoke to me and told me that now is the time that I didn't need to wait for a convenient time or a perfect time. He was calling me to come to Kenya just then. The couple lives in a very small house with just one room and a small living room. 
which also serves as the store and kitchen depending on the weather outside. It has also a very small window and a small office table with laptops atop. This is where Joy can perform some of her office duty. She's so happy, y'all. She's so happy. Man. She is so happy. You know, um, I don't think I could live free down there. My husband would be so protective over yeah. me. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> especially because her, she looked totally different from everybody over there. Let's be clear about that. But my husband, he even wouldn't even want me to speak because uh, I sound so American. Yeah. Imagine him. He, I wonder, did he feel like think, overprotective uh, over her? Yeah, but in the beginning, yeah. you have to. He's a monster. Yes, yes. So, but then when you begin to see that, okay, she's adopting, you know, yeah. she's uh, taking it in, you know, things is, you know, then you have to let go a lot mm -hmm, of it, you know, yeah. slowly. Yeah. With all her duties accomplished in the morning, Joy will finally have some time to sit on her laptop to do some work, if it needs to be done. But this is not a very fun thing to do while keeping her eye on her children and the other children outside, who might move out to destroy things if they're not kept under constant monitoring. So cute. This time around, she decided to show us some pictures she has in her laptop with her husband. So it's planting some. <laughs> Ground nuts and beans. Yes. These ones were taken as the couple was still enjoying their time together before marriage and a little after their marriage. It was a moment of deep nostalgia. Speaking of marriage, theirs was not your ordinary marriage, given that Albert was not even able to speak English. And he couldn't speak English. He just greeted us in, uh, in Bukusu. And he told us that he'd been praying for us along with the rest of the team. And as he was speaking, and talking about how God was speaking to him, God spoke to my heart. He said, that man is your husband. And that's why you didn't get married back home. He said, this one's your husband. Wow. So I was a little bit excited that God told me who my husband was. But I didn't say anything. Because to me, I believe that God made the man to pursue the woman. So I waited and I didn't say anything. I said, if, if I heard right, if that, this man is really meant to be my husband, he will make a move for me. So I waited. For three months, I waited. <laughs> and he, he didn't speak to me. If I walked into a room where he was, and I said, let me get to know this man who's supposed to be my husband, I would go to the room, and he would run away. As soon as I got in the room, he would run away. Wow. I thought, this guy, Albert, he doesn't like me. <laughs> He's running away from me for a reason. So... I asked his brother one day, I said, does your brother not like me? Did I do something to offend your brother? And then after that, Albert and I started talking, but he didn't know English. God gave me a vision and he showed me that Albert was, was married to me. He showed me that without speaking any language, our hearts understood the other one's heart. I prayed when I got up that morning and I said, God, if this vision you've given me is of you, I understand that we know each other, that we understand the heart of the other person, and thank you. But please, allow one of us to learn the language of the other one. Because if we're to have children, if we're to run a household, we have to communicate somehow. <laughs> Don't tell me that she can speak uh, Kenya. You don't think she can? Cause I, okay, let's see. Oh my goodness. So... That day, the same, same day, I didn't know Albert was also praying at home for some time to be able to talk to me. God told Albert, speak English with Carrie. And he, he gave him the understanding of English. So he, he had small, kidogo understanding of English. So he came to the compound that I was staying in with the ministry. And he just greeted me in English. He said, how are you? which I had never heard him say one word in English. I was very excited. I said, I'm fine. You know, we say I'm good back home, but here people say I'm fine. On his side, Albert was dying alone. He clearly loved this woman, but had absolutely no idea on how he would present this idea, given that the two were raised in different cultures and had different languages. But being a man on a mission himself, Albert didn't agree to give up he decided to follow up his flower gift with another ride across the town, which initially served to help Joy know around, even though he was ready to use the opportunity in his favor. Yes, kia, kwanza kwangu nilikuwa na reacti. 
The first time I saw her, I fell in love with her. But I kept my feelings to myself. I love that because that's what I, I was worried. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so for him to say the first time, yes. that's, that's a big plus. That's man. a big plus. Wow. That gives this is me, so like, cute. Yeah. Wow. It's very rare that you see, you know, American women, you know, moving to, um, you know, these Pacific countries, you know. And this shows me this is genuine love. Yeah. You know, I love it. Wow, she give she give up a lot, mm -hmm. man. Love. Ooh. As we talked and met multiple times, my. But I want to say this: when, you know, when a man from another country he comes to America, you know, if this man truly love his wife, not for just a green card or for citizenship, he really love his wife. He is also leaving a lot. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's true. He's that's, leaving his culture. Yeah, he's leaving Everything. some understandings. You know. Yeah, that's true. That um, makes sense. He leaving his uh, his food. <laughs> yeah, you know, African food is the best in yeah. the whole world. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. His <laughs> siblings, his family is just a lot. Yeah, him learning new culture. He's like relearning life all over again. You know. Yeah. So it's hard on, I would say, on, on people like my husband. Yeah. You know, but for those who are just trying to come to America for a green card and citizenship, you know, they just, they, they here for an agenda and uh, that's agenda not good. for business. Yeah. My feelings for her grew, and that's when I made a decision to tell her how I feel, even though it was very difficult. She wanted to know what I was trying to express. After some three days, I decided to approach her and try to speak English with her to see if we can somehow communicate. It was the first time I talked to her, and my first word to her was, I love you. I said it in Kiswahili, not in English. She asked me to repeat it, and I got afraid that I might spoil the whole thing. <laughs> Joy was eager to notice this. that Albert had struggled yeah. a lot to express his feelings, but most importantly, she came to fully comprehend what he wanted. It fitted so perfectly on both sides, since each one was promised by God to marry the other. But I was so worried because here in the Bukusu culture, you have to be able to cook ugali and have to cook it very well. It's not just like kind of cooking ugali. You have to get all the lumps out, you have to yeah. make it so it's not sticky, you can handle it well, not too dry. And the mother-in-law is supposed to watch you and see if you can cook good ugali to take care of her son. Wow. So that began to, to trouble my mind. Uh, yeah. We went to the store. We sat down and we started eating some lunch just there at the store at Tesha. We got some pilau and we were splitting one plate of pilau and saying, I said, Albert, I don't know. I, I know God told me I'm your wife, but I can't cook ugali. Mm. I don't know how. He said, my wife? I will cook the ugali. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was the moment I that I knew you, he yeah. wasn't trying yeah. to say, I love you because I'm a Muzungu. Because a lot of people will tell you, I love you because you're a Muzungu. And they think you can get them back to America. They think you have some money, some something, something to give to them. I had many, many people trying to marry me before Albert. Uh, but yeah. I kept, you know, you can tell when something is fake. Yeah. Yeah. But this one was real. And he said, I will cook the ugali. He was stepping outside of the cultural norm so that he can show me that his heart is there. Without any delay, the two decided to marry and Joy presented her idea to her parents, who initially worried about how they would communicate, but eventually gave their green light to the marriage. It was hastily arranged, and a couple twenty people were invited. Oh, you can tell that the guy is so happy. He is. You can tell, he, like you know how when some people don't know how to say a word or speak, but you see the genuineness in their face, mm -hmm. the expression. It's just beautiful, man. Because let's be honest about it, a lot of village men. They don't. They're not considered to have a lot of money, right? Yeah, uh, it's like uh, just maybe ten percent right. or twenty percent got money. So, 
sometimes you got to have a, a enough money to even get married. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he probably more also happy that he you don't have to put <laughs> you don't have to get no what's a bride price. No bride price all and the And then on top of that, they on one accord and loving yeah. each other. So, yeah. you know, he probably felt like it was going to be a pain and all of that. Mm. Only that around 400 people of the whole village turned up. After the marriage... Mm-hmm. Do you hear that? How, in the, they in invited 20 people. Then it ended up being 400 people. That, uh, That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I love this. Man. Cool. This is so cool. The couple moved on with their mission immediately as the two started their missionaries across the Bumalo area and around Lake Victoria. Uh, she learned all this. We're going to do this when we go to Africa. Ciao. No, no, no. Nah, I don't know. As children will be playing with their toys all around, Joy will be washing their dishes and their clothes with bare hands. Another demonstration of how deep she has been embedded into this African culture. The couple also has a small livestock of hens, which they believe will help them to raise the capital to improve their lives. She's smiling the whole Despite time. their happy marriage, the couple had gone through a lot of problems and struggles together. Marriage is wonderful, especially when you're married to the right person. There are so many blessings. There's a lot of, like, your heart is content, but marriage is not without its difficulties. Yeah. And Albert and I have had a lot of difficulties as we go through life. There were, there were times that I've almost died from sickness, and he's had to come in and be there. He's had to help do things around the house that he doesn't usually do because of the sickness that I had. I had malaria very bad, 2,800 uh, 2, count, and I was almost dead. The doctors had to help bring me back to life, and I was pregnant at the time, so thanks to God, I'm alive, and I'm my son, Zachariah, my firstborn, is alive because I was pregnant with him at the time. It was just a complete miracle story. I mean, I could talk for a long time on that one, but I won't. There's times when we don't have anything, and so we can't give. But there's times that God provides miraculously so that we can give. And even if we don't have anything but one meal, we'll always share what we have. Wow. And I know it's hard to believe that a Mzungu, a white person living here in in Kenya, can be without extra money. And God always provides. But we've had times where we got down and, and everything in the house, we had like one meal of potatoes left. So we're splitting those potatoes and making meals for the kids and not eating. And praying, God, bring money in. Bring something so we can support this family. Right. And you know that creates stress in a relationship too yeah. when you have nothing. Yeah. But thankfully, we both trust God. We both pray together. And instead of arguing against each other, we believe God is going to come through. So we'll eat what we have. We'll share what we have. And every time, even if I don't speak the words to someone, God always brings in something and provides at the last minute. Sometimes we have everything we need. And sometimes we've had almost nothing. But at that time, God has always proven himself faithful. He's a faithful God. He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Amen. Today, the couple wants to expand their mission and enlarge their missionaries. They plan to engage with more people and also establish school and training facilities dedicated to young people. You know, people who can come alongside us and help us do the work. Um, people who can donate their time, uh, their effort, or if their heart is in that place to, to help to get programs running, to help get projects running that can help fund this. So we have some people that help from the U.S. already, mostly from my mom's ministry. But eventually, uh, the vision that Albert and I have, we will have a, uh, a boy's home officially, not just be helping one and one and one. We'll have a boy's home. We'll have a school. We'll have... Um, we'll have a chapel that the boys can, can worship at morning and night. We'll have the worship team practicing all the time together. Uh, we also want to have many helps programs to assist people in getting seeds, like widows and, and people who don't have as much money to get some seed, to get jembes, to get fertilizer. Because around here, people will plant their fields, but they won't fertilize their fields. And they'll end up with cobs of maize that are this small. And then they can't feed their families and they don't have money. So we want to help to to plant the fields. We want to help with clothing. We want to help with food. We want to help with job training programs 
because the job training programs won't just give out food or give out clothes, but they'll help to raise someone up to a place where they can do it themselves. And that's really the aim, right? You don't want to keep feeding and feeding and feeding because then you need input from everyone else. You want to get the program to a place where you can raise people up so that they can learn and they can do for themselves because most people are just looking for something like that in life. They're not looking for someone to support them their whole life. They're looking for a way forward so that they can grow their life, so they can get a start in life, and that's where our heart is. We want to help people like that, but mostly we want to reach people with Jesus Christ. And Jesus says they'll know that you're Christians by your love. Wow. I like it. I love it. I love it, too. I love it, man. So we just want to share this with you guys. What's your thought? We are uh, we already give you guys all our heart from this, uh, you know, in this video. Yes, this is so beautiful to see. It really is. It is, man. It really is. It's, thank you for sharing this. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. Remember to share this video. Follow this page. God is good. Yep. Bye. Bye. <laughs>